we're all so busy living our lives. And then suddenly something cuts through that, something often very unexpected. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. A 31-year-old female with two stab wounds to the back. He was found to be in traumatic cardiac arrest. St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. So do you want to watch, darling, or do you want to look away? This is the worst day ever. You never know what's coming in, and you just have to be ready for anything. Gas canisters exploded, 15% burns to hands, face. In a world of uncertainty, we see a life-changing event. I'm a and &E, I need to get out of here, please. When patients come in, something takes over. I'll be fine. I'm going to be very fine. A place where life... <laughs> Give me an A. Give me an A. <laughs> Love. Okay, good lad. Well done. And loss... <laughs> ...unfold every single day. Did you enjoy the Queen's birthday yesterday? I watched yeah, the football. <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Don't worry. We get to see people who love one another in loads of different ways. Yes. And I think you can give someone the best care in the world, but really what they want is to hold the hand of the person that they love and for them to tell them that they're going to be OK. You're my hero. Basically, I've got the back of an earring caught in my ear, right. in the earlobe itself. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we can probably watch the game. Come on, you little devil. You know you want to come yeah. out. Come on, Ronaldo, don't score. Come on. I think it's getting closer. There you go. Is it out? Oh, yeah. wonderful. Look at the colour of it. Us today is 27 year old anesthetic nurse Marjorie. Do you get scared at work? Terrified. <laughs> it's still very new to me. Where's the break? Even months after being in the job and, and seeing so much. He has fractured his lower palate, um, his teeth are completely out. When the bleep goes off to report to AE, you still get that. <gasps> What's the trauma? Stand back. You can never anticipate how your shift is going to go. Around 10, we were stout with the kitchen out uh, on the left back side. Uh. Some days can be really stressful, but I love it. Where are you from? Dublin. Even though you're emotionally exhausted by the end of the shift, you're still happy that you got through the day and it's rewarding to feel like you're a part of a team that, that does make a huge difference in somebody's life. Hello, St George's. The trauma, yeah? Yep. A female cyclist is being rushed to St George's after colliding with a bus. Yep. Yep. The 47-year-old woman was riding home from work when the accident occurred. Adult trauma call, 16 minutes. The woman's husband is on his way to the hospital after being contacted by police. They explained to me that they'd 
cordoned off the road at the scene of the accident and they viewed the accident as potentially life-changing. They were thinking that there was a, a head injury. There was some shock involved. I just had a wave really buzzing around in my head and I wasn't really sure what to think or, or what to feel. Prepare to slide and slide. So, ready for handover? OK, we have 47-year-old Emma. Please. The bus was coming out of the garage. She's been coming down the street and she's running to the side window. She has a, about a four centimetre laceration to her left lip. She's complaining of lower back pain. Um, she's not really remembering what had happened, so she keeps repetitively asking what time it is um, and where we're going and where her bike is, like, every, every two minutes. Thank you. Where are we now? Here in St George's Hospital in uh, Amy oh, Recess. Oh, Did I come off of a bike? Yeah, you yeah. came off your bike. Oh, yes. You well, hit a vehicle. Oh, Coming out of the garage. The bus garage. It's quite amnesic. Memory loss is a symptom of a blow to the head. So, trachea central, bilateral the concern is that this confusion could be as a result of bleeding or swelling in the brain. What happened? You apparently were on a bicycle and you hit a bus. Uh -huh. So probably you hit your head against it. So that's why you need to scan your head and neck. Our major concern would be that the damage could be irreparable. City. Well, she's completely repetitive. She's going to go back pain. And she smashed her face, so. I request this. These patients, they need to be closely monitored. They can deteriorate very quickly. What happened? You rode your bike into a bus. Where am I now? You're in St George's Hospital. Did I come off of a bike? Yeah. I didn't really know what I was going to find when I got to the hospital. You go through lots of possibilities in your, in your head. Inevitably, perhaps, she does lead you to think, you know, what the worst-case scenario might be. When you were away, it took me three hours to toss up, didn't you? Why are you dusting the living room for? Because it was all tossed. <laughs> I could have my name in it. 87 year old Pamela has a suspected blood clot in her leg. She's come to AE with her 23 year old granddaughter, Cleo. You don't need to be doing housework. That's what you've got home help for. <laughs> you don't tidy up for the cleaner to come, do you? <laughs> Only you. You know how some people have photos on their phone of like their cats or their babies. It's like me with my nan. I've got a funny photo of you. Good girl. It like moves. Let me show you. I have all these photos of us together and she's always my background and I'm always showing photos of her to other people. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I don't look too bad, do I? I've it's got my collar on. <laughs> We're really similar. I think that's why we get along so well. We're always just like having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think because my mum's the youngest and then I'm an only child. And so us three were just together a lot, quite a lot when I was younger. Have you seen some photos of mum? Eh? Mum? Oh, that's nice. I feel so lucky that we can still have the same level of chats that we always could, like, she's so on it. How are you feeling? I think that's enough. Her mind is still so independent. It's only her body that's letting her down. And I think it is all for that, it's like it, isn't it? Are you self-diagnosing now? Yeah, 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 <laughs> You're the doctor yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I'm the doctor. <laughs> We're so close, and it just really kills me when she's ill, and... Everyone knows, all my friends know how much she means to me, because it really scares me.
what happened? Sorry? What happened? You don't re re remember? No. OK. In any case, for the time being, the most important thing is to do the scan. 47-year-old head teacher Emma is in CT after a collision with a bus while cycling home. Doctors are concerned about injuries to her brain, face and spine. Her husband, Mick, is waiting in the relatives' room. Emma is one of those, those strong people you come across in life. She's always been uh, very positive, very much a heart on her sleeve person. Wants to talk, needs to talk about, about things. Always look to bring the best out of people. She doesn't remember me, No, she's not orientated, but she's alert. She's somebody that's been there for me for the last 24 years. Breathe in and hold your breath. Emma and I met through some bizarre circumstances, really. She was working at an outdoor centre in North Wales. I was living in London, and myself and a, a group of lads all travelled up to, to Wales for an outdoor activities weekend. Emma was, I think, about 19 at the time. Very bubbly personality. She obviously loved the outdoors as well, so we hit it off straight away. Late 30s? Yeah, that's more, yeah, 40s. You reckon 40s? I think I, had, I hoped fairly early on that Emma might be the one. Oh. Our wedding day was uh, July 1992. Poppy arrived in May of 98. Uh, Alfie came along four years later. Normally. When the children were young, we carried on enjoying the outdoors. We love being on the beach on holiday, building sandcastles, flying kites, having bonfires. We love finding a little beach that you can only get to perhaps from the sea and perhaps being the only people there as well. Where am I? You're in St George's Hospital. Looking back, I'm very fortunate to be married to her and to have um, spent so much time with her. Hello, Amy Reception, can I help? What's this? What's that? What are you doing, dear Michael? <laughs> what have you written there? Ten down is egg on. What's that? You put bread. To egg on is to... It don't mean an egg. Oh, right, no, oh, I see. Yeah, egg on, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise you'd been sabotaging my books. <laughs> oh. oh, shit. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Es que siento dolor constante en la espalda. Y es como si me estuvieran ahí dando... Y el dolor se me ha bajado a las piernas. Mira, ah, ah, ya no lo tengo aquí en el culo. 33 year old Josh has come to AE with severe back pain. Ah. He's with his husband, Isaac. Just as I am very rational, Josh is very emotional. Oh, shit. For example, if, he's, if he twists his ankle, he would say that he's broken his foot. I don't know if he is very sensitive to pain or he's overreacting, but either or, yeah, he doesn't handle pain very well. I don't know what to do, because, I swear to God, for God. When I'm in agony, I, I only can think in, in Spanish. Los embarazadas les dicen que al lado funciona. Pobrecillas, me las imagino con este dolor y un bombo. The first thought is, please, God, kill me right now. Now, <laughs> I cannot handle this. 
Si tuviéramos que parir, Dios mío de mi vida. Para mí sería lo más maravilloso del mundo. Uy, creo que estoy desvariando ya. Joe's you, please. Oh, yeah, it's me. Thank you. Is that turn left? <sighs> we met online in, in a chat room um, when there were chat rooms really long ago. I just joined to a chat and he was there. And I was thinking, oh, what a nice guy. But I was not thinking about, oh, he's the love of my life or something like that. So we started sending emails, chatting, and, and then talking on the phone. And that's how we met. Yesterday night, I was doing my exercises. And suddenly, I had like an electric shock in all my back. And I couldn't move. I couldn't Just move at night. all. Right, OK, yeah. First of all, we need to get you some more pain relief. Okay. okay. Um, then we need to get you to take your trousers and socks and shoes off. So you need to put this gown on. We've got the fat part. OK. I'll get you a bowl to do a little bit of urine in it, if you can, if you can do that. And then I'll get you this pain relief. Is that better? OK. OK. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I feel better. OK, brilliant. Thank you. OK. The first time I met him, I was very nervous. We met in a train station in Madrid. I was coming out of the train and going up, I think, through some stairs. I never, ever believe in love at first sight. But when I saw him in person for the first time, I knew it. I thought, oh my god, what a guy. I was in love with him since the first second, so I, I, I kissed him. So it's good to kill him for coming me, so. You think I'm walking in the back of your head? The best thing about meeting Josh was that I was coming out of an environment where I was focused on one single thing, and that was religion and our beliefs, into a world of the unknown to me. But he, it looked like he had it all sorted. And that kind of attracted me. Tengo que admitirlo. He hecho todo esto para que me vieras en pata de hospital. Porque estoy muy sexy en pata de hospital. There's my husband now. He does. I'm just going to go and get him, actually. What's his name? Mick. Mother of two, Emma, is in recess after a collision with a bus while cycling. Doctors are concerned she might have life-changing brain injuries and are reviewing her CT scans. Emma's husband, Mick, has been waiting to see her. I wasn't somebody who ever liked going into hospitals when I was younger to, to visit people. Struggled with the whole the hospital thing. I don't think anything really prepares you for seeing somebody go through uh, treatment, surgery. She's all right. She's had her first scan. She's a little bit repetitive. Hello. Not when it's somebody you love. I haven't got a clue. You got any idea what happened? It sounds like there was a bus involved. Where was it? You know. Outside the bus garage. Oh, don't remember any of that. Where am I now? St George's. So, where was I before that? In the road outside the bus garage, I think. What was that? And where am I? I'm still in George's, yeah. What did you say I hit? Well, you hit the bus or the bus hit you. Outside where? Outside the bus carriage. It's on the bike. I 
Um, what did I hit? You tell me what you hit. Obviously, Emma was going through some sort of trauma. I became concerned, worrying whether there was going to be a, a permanent nature to it. How are you doing? Just trying to piece together what happened. I can't remember anything from one minute to the next. If a patient has physical injuries, they can always recover or adapt their lifestyle. But if somebody loses their memories, that's it. You can't replace them. OK, I'll be back down later. I'll have a check on you, see how you're doing. All right. Thanks. Your life would never be the same. Where am I now? And you don't remember anything at the moment. Is there a Pamela? Oh, that's us. Yeah, one sec. Oh, sorry. I need to get better at driving this. Pamela has come to A&E with a suspected deep vein thrombosis. Her granddaughter, Cleo, is with her. Right, I'm Marion, one of the doctors. Nice to meet you. Okay, and you're her granddaughter. granddaughter. Right, today um, what they referred you in with was whether you were having, um, if you had any blood clots to the leg. But you've had previous blood clot before? On her lungs, On yeah. Her she lungs. was in um, Brompton okay. for that. Good. It's okay. about two years ago now. And who normally looks after you? My mum's normally around quite a lot, but she's away at the moment. Okay, so, okay, I've so you're helping of, out. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. good. Since I've come back from university, I've been trying to help my mum more. We're always calling each other, trying to make sure, has she got enough milk? What can we do? Right, can I have a listen to your chest and um, examine you? Can you envisage the fact that one day she might not be here? I can't really. No, I don't know what me and my mum would do, really. It would be like a huge, huge chunk out of our lives. And let's have a listen. But she's made of really strong stuff. I think it is that kind of stereotype of, like, the war generation, like, just fighting through, blitz spirit. Big breath. And I think she's the, like, embodiment of that, really. It was frightening, you know, in the war time with all the bombing all the way around. It would be a lie to say it wasn't frightening. That's good. I'm going to lift these both up. We had to go in the air raid shelter in, that, in the garden. And I remembered when I was small, coming out of the shelter, and the sky was a bright, bright red when all the East End got bombed and everywhere. It was frightening, yes. But my dad made it all nice and cosy and that, you know, comfortable. I was very lucky. Um, what we need to do is uh, just do a repeat set of observations. So that's your heart rate, your blood pressure, um, your temperature. Yes. OK. Brilliant, no thank worries. you. When this is over, what yeah. are you going to do? Going to have a drink. I'm going to have a drink. What, uh, well, if they don't give you antibiotics, yeah. you can have a Bailey's tonight. Yeah, okay, yeah. But if they put you on antibiotics, you're going to have yeah, to wait. You're have to wait. Uh, uh. Where am I now? I'm still at St George's. Emma is in recess with her husband, Mick, after sustaining serious head and facial injuries in a collision with a bus. Hello, hi. The re first report, yeah, of the scan is negative. There's no sign of any bleed in your brain, any problem with your spine. But this is a very quick report, so we have to wait for the full report. And some injuries might crop up because they need to go through all the images. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. Does your head hurt? My head? Not really. My chin, chin and neck hurt, actually. Yeah, it's probably the brace. Around here. 
patient head side of the bus yeah. front window. No yeah, speed. I think she kind of... know about speed. No, we don't know about the speed. Specialists from St George's ear, nose and throat team are analysing the scans of Emma's face and neck. It appears on the scan that you may have an injury to the front of your throat and that we need to have a look and see what effects that has had. How is your health otherwise? It's been fine recently, yeah. Recently? Um, she had uh, treatment for breast cancer a couple of years ago. What was that done? Here. Yeah. It's got a season ticket here now. Emma's cancer was a complete surprise, something out of the blue, really. Open your mouth for me. Open your mouth more wide. Nothing prepares you for that time. There's a nasty wound there that we need to fix as well. My mum had also been through breast cancer when I was young. A long battle she finally lost. But I wanted, needed to try and be positive for Emma. I'm going into your nose, close your mouth. Trying to hold the family together. Bear with me. And we're through. Well done, well done. I remember after Emma's first round of chemotherapy, recognising that her hair was starting to fall out, we needed to shave all of Emma's hair off and just, just had a go at doing it. OK, could you say one, two, three? One, two, three. It's the only time I've ever cut anybody's hair. But it sort of felt like it was a positive thing because Emma's hair was falling out anyway. There's some blood on the left focal cord. She dealt with not having any hair, like she deals with most things, really, just kind of got on with it. She didn't ever want to wear a wig while she was going through treatment. She's got a great big hematoma. Being determined that it wasn't going to beat her. Emma did take it all in her stride, really. Now, for the short term, we need to protect her airway. Like this swelling to her throat, it is actually increasing, OK? And it's just above her vocal cords, and that's the narrowest piece of the airway. Um, we need to keep that space open to allow her to breathe and to allow that swelling to go down. So okay. we'll need to do that fairly soon. That's why I call it if it is done. All right. Okay? Specialist throat surgeons have been called to decide how best to stop Emma's airway from closing. It will always be an emergency when somebody's airway is obstructed or compromised because without your airway, you can't survive. Right, Emma, this is just going to go on your face just for a minute, all right? The things that we're exposed to in our job, it really makes you reflect on your life and appreciate the people in your life more. You never know when it could be their last day. You know how quick life can go. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Does that hurt? Yeah. Because I kind of jolted. No, not another. Is this normal? Okay, I'm here again. Hello. Right. Here's your dihydrocoding. <sighs> HR administrator Josh is being treated for back pain. He's with his husband, Isaac. Ayúdame, por favor. Piernas arriba. Me tienes que levantar las piernas, por favor. Yo me voy bajando, pero tú levántame las piernas. Por tu padre, por tu padre, por tu padre. Ah. Ah. I feel, I don't know, like a spasm. Can you pull me towards you with your feet? That's it. That's it. Well done. Keep going. Keep going. I grew up in Barcelona, 
and all my good childhood memories are with my family. It was a happy childhood, except that I was not like the rest of the boys. Even when they were young, they were seeing boobs or things like that, and they were like crazy. And I was like, I don't understand that. So I had a few issues. Good. Can you just raise off the bed this foot? But my family were great. My mom knew and my dad accepted. That's brilliant. Okay, lovely. And, and down again, down again, down. You can do some reflexes on you, okay? Yeah. In Isaac's case, his parents, they prefer to think that being gay is a sin and you have to stop talking to this person, even if it's your kid. I am a Christian. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, but I'm not a Jehovah's Witness anymore. All right. You tell me if you can feel me touching you, and whether it feels the same on both sides, all right? Yes. 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 I think I knew from the very beginning that I was gay, but I still had the hope I could beat it. But it became evident I, I couldn't hide it anymore. It's, it's something that is built into you, you cannot decide over it. Next thing I'm going to do now, do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to do it with soft touch, OK? Like this. Yes. 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 So I came out and I was 23 when my parents decided that I had to go out of the house. Yes. Yes. I sent an email to my mom told her everything. And then the next thing that happens is my dad replying to that email, saying that they had called um, the elders of the congregation so that they could meet with me and that I shouldn't contact them anymore. After a while, I was expelled from the congregation, like this fellowshiped, and and I didn't have any more contact with my parents. OK, that's very good, very... OK, excellent, you can relax now, that's fantastic. Well done, well done, good, good. For a time, it was very painful. But um, Josh and I met slightly before my parents told me to leave. And he stood by me. And I still thank him for it. So it's that, that there, which seems to have expanded. Yeah, all this just does it look great. Earlier in recess. Doctors discovered a dangerous swelling on Emma's throat. Surgeons are assessing whether she'll need an emergency operation to protect her airway. We got a message from Poppy. She says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'm a Christian and an Emma as well. We've both had a, a faith for quite a long time. Love you. <laughs> Praying for you, Mummy. It's something perhaps that you call upon more in those, those sorts of times of need or, or desperation. So let's try it again. I was I come home from work. Pass that on both hands. And I hit Yep. I've probably been through that with you about 50 times now. How you doing? Have you any pain at the moment, love? A little sore here, but... I 
think it's a lot more difficult for the relative to be in that position rather than the patient because they feel completely helpless. We're just waiting to find out what's going to happen, if they're going to intubate or not. So, Does there some swelling? Yeah. I mean, it could be fine. We just want to wait to see how swollen it is. The scariest thing for relatives from my own experience is not knowing what's happening, not knowing what's, what's going to happen and how it's going to affect your life. Don't panic, don't worry. Hi there. Hello. Yeah. One of the ENT doctors. The CT scan shows your larynx looks quite swollen. And yeah. Sometimes that can be a bit unpredictable. Yeah. So we usually like to secure the airway to make it safe. And I think the best thing to do is just to bypass the area of narrowing until we know what's going to happen. And then we know that your airway is protected. OK, it's called a tracheostomy. Yeah. It does make it a little bit difficult to start off with because it makes it difficult to speak, OK? But um, it also means that while we're in theatre and you're asleep, we can repair the injury you have to the, to the mouth there. OK? OK? Emma will now be taken to theatre for an emergency operation to keep her airway open. We are going to go upstairs any second. I think for nearly everybody in healthcare, they have had some kind of experience or event in their life, and that's why they're drawn to, to this work. And it's the same for me. My dad had a chronic lung disease. I remember the feeling of helplessness and, and desperation being in that position. Yep, we're going to St James's Theatre. Do we know what number? When he died, that's when I decided that I was going to do nursing. The empathy that I can share with relatives is a really important quality to possess as a nurse. You can offer comfort and try to understand what they're going through. Transport lounge. Transport lounge. Thank you very much. All right, no worries. Thank you. I can't eat this. Why? Horrible. Cancel. Loose. Yeah? It's called the discharge lounge. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Discharge lounge. Right, if I take a bite, you can take mine. Yeah. In other words, if I use that, yeah? Yeah. Hello. Let me see your bite first. <laughs> <laughs> discharge lounge. Departure. Departure lounge. Oh, my God. This thing stresses me out. Do you want some lip stuff? No, I'm all right. Are you sure? I've got it in my bag. No, you should be trying. That's not good for it, though. That makes it more dry. Let me get it out. I need some as well. Pamela was brought to A&E by her granddaughter, Cleo, and is waiting for test results. She's just been through so much. And she just appreciates, like, little things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't She's always just, like, quite pleased with what she's got. Hi. Hi. Have you had an ECG done before? Oh, yes, I did the other day. Yeah, just have to pop loads of stickers on you, that's all. Oh, yes, yeah. She wants everyone else to be happy. That's her main thing. Poor girl, she's been away five months. Holiday, and then she comes back to the hospital with me. <laughs> well, at least I had a holiday. Where were you? <laughs> I was in South America for five months. I think a lot of people's ideas of what a grandparent would be like is a bit more like, oh, you should be saving up and doing sensible things. But she's always been like, go and experience things, do what makes you happy. I said, look, when you're my age, you think, oh, I've done so and so. All I can say was in the land army. That's still <laughs> impressive. What'd she do? She's in the land army after oh, the war. All you can see. I was in the land army, market gardening. We had to do haymaking, all that sort of thing. Other different jobs, you know. I went up Oxford Street to buy a red overcoat. 1947, this was. 
Before I knew it, I joined the land army. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was the happiest time of my life. You make good friends. So I was one of the girls who thought I'm going to get out of Battersea and see a better life. And we had the German prisoners of war helping, the Italian prisoners of war. And if it was a cold day, the Germans would make a nice fire and somebody must have got some potatoes from somewhere and we would have these potatoes, you know. I'll leave the stickers on you for now, just in case they want another one, OK? Oh, yes, thank you, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good, good time. Right, so good news. Um, so that's gone, that's gone back normal. What you've got of the leg yeah. is uh, what we call cellulitis, which is um, infection of the soft tissues. That's why it's red and a bit warm to touch. Yeah. I've got a prescription for you for the antibiotics yeah. for a week. So what you need to look out for is if the redness carries on going up the leg yeah. or if you become unwell with it. OK, so these are worrying signs that yes. the infection's getting okay. bad. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think the main thing I've learned from my nan is just to, yeah, be positive, really. Like, try and see the best in everything. Don't nitpick and don't worry about the little things. I think a lot more people could do with being like her. <laughs> Go on, thumbs up. Little tiny thumbs up. Do you feel loved? Yes. I'd be in a bad way if I didn't have my family. You know, I'm very lucky. I hear laughter. That's a very good sign. Yes. A hey, positive. I think, I think it's the, the drugs speaking now. OK, good, right. Earlier today, Josh came in suffering with back pain. He's been prescribed pain relief, and examinations have shown no serious injuries. Pilates is a good class you should go to to strengthen the middle, strengthen your core. It's just really a matter of taking just regular pain relief. Putting a pillow between your legs, if you try doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that your leg I, I, is not I've been dragging sleeping, down. I've been sleeping like that. OK, brilliant. Okay. Oh, Mom. That's good. Oh, OK, that's good. I could stay in the bed for the rest of my life, you know? It would be so happy. No, it would be so happy. And as I don't eat much, I don't eat much. And I'd like to make a selfie for you. No me hagas eso en la cabeza, te lo suplico. ¿Te me harías? Sí. <laughs> From the very beginning, since Josh and I met, we wanted to have children. And we could have adopted in Spain, but it's way more difficult than it is, for example, in the UK. So having children is the only reason why we moved to the UK. ¿No te sientes? Ayúdame con las zapatillas. Ah, es verdad. But I felt like at home. I feel more at home here than I do in Spain. Dame un segundo, por favor. We already have been assigned with a surrogate. She's amazing, she's really good. And we talk to her every day. And we hope that we can have the transfer soon and have our children at home. She's Thank you very much. Guys. That's OK, no problem at all. OK, right. Becoming dads is the biggest thing that could ever happen to us. I know we're ready for it. And as much responsibility as it is, I think we're going to do a good job. We're going to try hard, though. me all my DVDs and, and all my books. And I've got three bottles of baby there from my grandson. <laughs> and 
I'm gonna be the easy dad. I'm gonna be the one saying, okay, I'm gonna buy you this, but don't say anything to your dad. And Isaac is gonna be the one, oh, you didn't do that. Go to your room right now and think about it. None of us know whether we're going to be here tomorrow, but it does make you stop and reflect on what's important in life, and you know it does teach you to try and look for look for the good stuff um, and seek it out. Oh. Didn't think this was going to happen when you woke up this morning, did you? No, it just fucking up business, doesn't it? Mail would collapse with loss of consciousness. I saw on the other side of the road there was a man lying on the floor. And then I recognised the dog. It's like a slow motion that I realised that it was my dad. Why is your heart rate going up? And I just put his head in my lap and I was just talking to him, stay awake, Dad. I thought if he does go, hopefully he'd have heard my voice. <laughs> <laughs> 